Most people are trying to make a life with living in retirement and having, but they're not always able to do so. They're thinking, I'll be fine in retirement, but they're not really doing a real job. They're doing a job that they enjoy. They're doing a job that's fun. They're doing a job that they think about, but they're not really thinking about what it's going to be for them when they're old. They're gray, and they're too tired to really work. In life, we have moments of time to make a difference for someone. Today, I met someone who was really lovely and allowed me to be myself, and that was a great opportunity. And openly, we had a little bit of a conversation, and then she had to go off with her children. In truth, we have moments of time to be like that with for people, that we either sit alone and do absolutely nothing to network and move ourselves forward in life, or we simply decide that we can make a difference in the lives of others. And if we do that, then we know what to do and what to say and how to handle it. If we don't practice, we don't get better at it, and that's the reality that in life, networking means everything. It means everything about who we are, it means everything about where we're going to go, and it means everything about what our income will be now and in the future. In life, we have moments of time to make a difference for someone. There are two types of differences. One is those that raise people up, lift them to their highest self, and there's others that just tear people down. They litigate them, they abuse them, they psychologically abuse them, they emotionally abuse them, they sometimes physically abuse them, and they don't get that they're not doing anything in the name of God at all. The truth is, there are some lovely people in this world who will help, but sometimes it takes them just saying, what can I do for you right now to help you? And that's what they need to do. But a lot of times we don't even ask that question. We presume to know, we presume to get involved, we presume to feel, but we're not thinking about how it feels from that person's perspective when we reach out for help. And that's the truth. Now in life, we have moments of time to be something at one moment of time, and then later in life, we might be something else at another moment in time. You see, that's the evolution of a relationship. And today, politics and everything else in the world is really about relationships. We have a couple great politicians who are throwing their hats in the rings towards presidency, and openly we should be listening to them. We've got one who's an author and activist who knows about joy and justice, and we have another who is a lawyer who literally knows about the law and can help people in troubles when they're in their own state, particularly if she's got a legal degree from every state in the nation. Wouldn't that be some kind of president? That if you've got a problem, she's got it or her team's got it. Isn't that amazing? You see, we have to have people like that in the world. We have to have people who understand other nationalities and other cultures, and both of these women have been somewhat of a wealthy person. One has traveled the world from the earliest of ages with her families, her parents, and her loved ones, and the other has literally a cultural background that gives her both perspectives, not only that of Christianity, but also of Hinduism, which is really quite, quite superb. You see, everyone needs to know about God, and everyone needs to understand what the Lord is, and everyone needs to have a name and a book to, to follow in order to find themselves in the way that they need to be, the way that they should be, the way that they should go forward in life, and whether or not they're going to actually have a retirement in life. Because, let's face it, like in my case, when I was cyber hacked to the floor, and people just kept abusing my name and lying about it, and those were people who were supposed to protect the law. And in reality, they didn't protect the law, and they didn't protect me. So, as you can see, I look like a mountain man now. And it's sort of funny and it's sort of odd, particularly because I wear angel pants and <laughs> someone will laugh when they hear that, but some of my LinkedIn followers know what that is. The reality is that in life we have moments of time to let God help us and we have moments of time to let him not. And I've just discovered it's easier to let God help. Now when I talk like this, I'm talking about a man who's really lost everything and who's lost everything to the point that people don't even believe him to how much he's been through. And that's precisely what the attackers and the hazers and the harassers and the people that produce hate in our land do. They make it almost impossible for someone to believe that those things are going on for another individual. And that's real risk. It's a real risk when we stop listening to people's stories and we stop listening to the truths that they're telling. There's a lot of people who lie in this world, and everyone lies to a point. I prefer to talk about things in the way if we don't disclose certain things, and to some people, that's a lie. I can't say that it's a lie because I'm not intentionally telling them a, a falsity. I'm literally just saying I'm not providing you that information. I don't know you well enough. I don't like you well enough. I don't trust you well enough. You see, there's a real difference between things that are confidential and non-disclosed and things that are openly out there that we can talk about publicly. And we have to really look at some of those topics as we head into this year's upcoming election. That there are things we really got to talk about in hot topics, and we've got to talk about people's fears, we've got to talk about people's misconceptions, we've got to talk about people's misperceptions. But I get really careful when I hear people say, well, that's a perception. Not necessarily. A truth for someone is a total truth for that person. It's not like some psychiatrist is going, okay, well, that's not really happening, but that's what you think is happening. That's not what this is about. This is about people have a truth that they experience every single day. They have the facts of their lives, they have their observations, they have their experiences of being hazed for sure. 
a lot of people don't understand what that's like because they've never been through it. They've never had someone hate on them. They've never had someone steal from them. They've never had someone maim and destroy their clothing, their productivity, their computers, their property, and that's really a good thing. But for those of us who have had all that happen to them, it's harder for other people to believe it because they think, we don't live in a world like that, but in truth, we really do. We live in a world where people will team up and mob someone to harm them, and they will simply lie. They'll go by them in a car and they'll pretend that they had a conversation. They'll well, say hello to them and that's it. But then they'll tell someone that they had a full-on, full-fledged two-hour conversation. That is a blatant lie. There's no perception about that at all. So in life, we've got moments of time to make amends. And making amends is really what peacemaking is about. That we can sit there and we can continue to hold on to our grudges and hold on to our misperceptions and misconceptions of what might have happened based on some idea that we have about what happened and why it happened. Or we can literally sit down with people in front of a whiteboard if we have to and plot out both sides and then look for commonalities and similarities. And finding out these similarities in life in terms of what we can agree on. What can we agree to agree on instead of what can we agree to disagree on is really important. And that's really what we're talking about today. In today's Magic and Mayhem audio cast, we're talking about how do we make situations with others in which we agree to agree upon something. Wouldn't that be an interesting election where we had all the politicians talking about things that they actually agreed on? And then we took the things that they don't agree on. And then we'd be very clear about how much we're going to get from one politician and where it's going to end with another. And that's sort of my suggestion that this time, this year, when we go into the debates that people have around the country to try and pick sides and decide what they're doing, that we allow people to put together a list, a whiteboard of what do we agree on together of what's really important for the nation. You see, then people get a good clear message of what they feel that some of the leading minds in politics and education and in intelligence and in spirituality and in relationship making feel is the most important things for the nation to tackle. Then, once we have all that clear with all the politicians in agreement, we then talk about the differences of where they disagree. And then that helps us pick the best president for the next round of presidency, don't you think? But that's just the journalistic mind and the analytical saying, hey, let's do it with data. Let's do it with talking about real things and real subjects. Now, this has been a Blaze Communication moment, a marketing moment, if you will, but openly I'm looking for an audio cast channel in which to produce better files and possibly even a producer who can help protect the fact that someone keeps editing my video channel. Everything I make is usually longer, and then I end up finding that it's been cut down to 10 minutes by someone who had no lawful right to do it. We have to be careful of those people. We have to be careful of the people in the libraries, the people who think they have a right to do things to others just for the fun of the fact that they're bored or they have nothing else to do. And that's not really right or appropriate. And it's not really legal either. So the value of having these women as future presidents is what they bring to the table, not what we've already had at the table. It's what the newthness of them that brings to the table that allows us to create peacemaking talks with people around the globe that allows us to produce understanding and commonalities and, my favorite word, similarities with others. You see, it's not our differences that make us difficult. It's our opportunities to really learn and grow and make new decisions about what we're going to do and what we're going to say that really is relevant for us. Well, this has been Blake and Cinebla's Communications LLC saying thank you for listening.